If you like guitars and are not familiar with the great guitar build-off, you're missing out. The great guitar build-off of 2021 is kicked off and this will be my first of a few videos where I'll show my entry for the competition. It'll be fun, so join me. Let's build a guitar. Hi, I'm Yoav and this is the Electric Luthier. For the second year in a row, Ben Crow from Crimson Guitar has organized a friendly for charity guitar competition. Really, how can I not join the fun? And this year, we even have t-shirts. <laughs> Last year, I designed what I thought was a pretty cool guitar, which was pretty standard in any way except for the body shape. There were so many amazing guitars, I'm not really surprised it was missed. This year I wanted to expand a little and do something a little different. I've been meaning to build a 7 string for a while and I've decided to combine it with a multi-scale fan fretted design. This really started coming together after I saw Tosin Abasi and noticed he had a pretty unique guitar which as it turns out was designed for him and is now commercially produced. He actually plays an 8 string but also has a line of 7 strings and also 6 strings for, for normal humans. I wanted to borrow some elements from his design but the more I got into it I realized it was pretty much perfect in its own way. So I'm just going to stick with the design and not try and improve on it. If I want to be original, I have to copy someone original. I actually did a video about mimicking designs, so if there's a design you fancy, I'll, I'll link it up here. So there's a list of features I like about this guitar. And then there are a few I'm still not sure about. Now aside from the 7 string fan fretted design, which was the starting point, I really like the ergonomics. The bottom side, which is a lot like the Strandberg, should be comfy for playing seated with a guitar on any leg, in either a classical or a standard position. I like the pronounced curves, which are similar, though very different, to the ones I've had in my last year's design. I also like the overall curvature and the half-glossy, half-matted front. These headstocks also caught my eye. I think the designers here deserve extra credit. It's not easy to be both original and, and beautiful at the same time. I am probably not going to be using these beautiful Fishman Fluence pickups for budgetary reasons, but hey, we can always upgrade later, right? Okay, next step is shopping. I got my shopping list and it's off to AliExpress. I actually did a full video on that as well and I'll link that up here as well. When you don't order original parts, I find it's always better to order well in advance so you don't have too many surprises when you come to put it all together. For example, I know I'll need all seven single bridge saddles before I finalize the width of the neck and the neck pocket. So it's all kind of tied together. So I go through the whole list and make sure I've ordered everything. It's now back to the preparations. I print out the plans on A3 paper and put them together for making my templates. I'm probably only going to make an actual template from the front and the headstock. The front and the back curves will just need to be marked, not routed, so I can probably get away with paper templates. I managed to get my hands on a nice something like 6 meters, almost 2 inches thick beam of poplar. So I'm really going to use it whenever I can. I understand it's comparable to ash and alder as far as tone, I'm not, not going to go into the fine details about that. 
The important thing is that it's been drying and acclimatizing indoors for about three years now. So it's as good as it's going to get and as dry as it's going to get. Poplar is on the softer side of the hardwoods and doesn't always have the most unique colors and shape. But in this case, I'm going to color it opaque, so it really doesn't matter. For the neck, I've even made a bunch of laminated neck blanks almost a year ago and then let them just sit and finish all their stressing and de-stressing. The one I'm going to use for this guitar is the unlikely combination of Poplar and Ipea or Ipea aka Ironwood or Pink Trumpet. It's used for outdoors decking and is one of the hardest woods I've ever seen. Nails literally bend when hammering on it. I use that as the center sort of skunk stripe between two stripes of poplar. I'm probably going to enforce it with carbon rods anyway, so we'll see how that works out. I'm also still not sure if I'm going to use a flat or an angled neck, but we'll see about that. So I have all my wood, and through the magic of editing, all my hardware has already arrived. I've got two packs of locking tuners, so I can choose whatever configuration I want. A whole bunch of single string bridge saddles thingies, a nut I'm not going to use, a beautiful pair of angled seven string pickups, furls, a truss rod, carbon rods, screws with washers if I decide to bolt on the neck and not glue it, buttons, pots, a switch, a blank rosewood fingerboard, and even strap buttons and a bag of screws for covers and such. And I even have a nice set of seven string Dodarios. I wasn't sure if I was gonna give up the design, but I guess these orange cans are kind of a giveaway. Orange and black have always been one of my favorite color combinations. So from now on, this will be the making of Orangina, my nod to Tosin Abasi, and my entry to the Great Guitar Build-Off 2021. Next time, I promise a whole lot more sawdust and noise as I start the actual build. And if you want to show your support, please like, subscribe below. And if guitar building interests you, check my website, theelectricluthier.com, and all my other videos. And until then, go ahead, build a guitar. I know I will.